what I'm going to talk about now is just the simple basics of digital rendering and um, the way that I like to proceed and maybe a couple of different options. We'll start over here with the cube and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a base color and um, all my line work is on uh, layer one and what I want to do is I want to put a layer uh, below layer one so I'm going to create a new one and then drag it down. And what I've always preferred to do is to simply come in and put down too much paint with a paintbrush at 100% opacity. If you go with less than 100% opacity, uh, it can create problems. And since I've got uh, my undo button set, uh, as my my stylus button, I'm kind of approaching erasing the same way that we do with with uh, line work and just trying to create quick gestures. Because if you try and erase slowly, um, and then you come back and erase your line work, then you're going to have an unclean uh, erased edge. And so um, from here. We have a couple of options, and uh, one would be uh, to create a new layer and then pick this uh, airbrush and go to white. I'm simply going with white, and um, I'm going to roll. See my flow is about 10%. I might bump that up a little bit. Uh, oh, I need to put it on white. Then add some color. The fewer strokes you can make, the better. And then come back in and erase what I don't want. Now, one of the challenges with this process is that there's some kind of airbrush residue outside of my cube and you can kind of see I'm erasing it now from where I mistakenly used the blue but we can't even see the white and so if we were to be doing a, a larger rendering and you had more um, layers that essentially were under this that white might show up so that's one way to uh, do this is to go ahead and color that in but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that layer and show you another way so because I have this cube selected and I've got just the base color on this layer, I'm going to duplicate that layer. And then I've got uh, this button right here, which is lock transparency. I'm going to click on that. And what that does is it prevents me, I'll pick a color that you can see pretty well. It prevents me from coloring anywhere other than where pixels are uh, existing on that layer. So you can see even though I started to sketch right here, I'm putting pressure down, it's only showing up as I, as I roll through that object. And so from here, I'm now going to grab uh, white and the airbrush. And again, the fewer strokes the better, so maybe I'll just come back in with one. If there's a little bit of a gradient in there, that's fine. Um, but now all I have to erase, and now you've got to click off of lock transparency. If you don't, it's going to give you an error because you can't erase any pixels uh, on lock transparency. And now I have less to erase. And so um, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, the original base color was layer 3, so I duplicated that again. And um, now I'm going to actually increase the flow. That might be a way to do this a little bit better. And I'm just going to basically paint the top layer. And what I did not do there is I need to lock the transparency on that. So now it's only laying that white down um, on the object where there are pixels. And so now it's pretty easy for me to come back in and erase.
And so now I've basically rendered that cube. The way that I like to approach this is do one surface at a time. And once you've gotten to this point, you could actually, you know, merge all these down, and now you've got uh, your object. So um, let me show you an alternative way to do this. So I'm still going to be on a layer below my line work layer. Now I don't recommend this, but it might be a quick way to get stuff done. If I um, click on this button with this fill bucket, it says sample one, sample all layers. This is sampling all layers. And what that means is that I can actually drop, if I pick a color and I've got that bucket, I can drop something on what is now layer five, which is underneath layer one. And it will only fill um, up until it sees some pixels. It's, it's basically filling in in a contained area. We'll try that again. But what you notice, or what you may notice, is that there's actually a little bit of white around this object. So um, very much like uh, the magic wand tool in Photoshop, this has a tolerance built into it. And you can adjust that tolerance here. And so the more tolerance, the more tolerance means the more white that we'll get. The less tolerance means that you need to be more exact and you should actually get less tolerance or less white around the edges. And I may have that backwards. Let's see. Looks like I've got that backwards. But in this instance, we'll see I've got more tolerance there and it did not recognize uh, the area that was filled in. So let's come back down. And now I click in there and it's fine. Now let me show you the difference between that and if I click off of this and then I click in this area, all it's going to do is fill in the entire layer, uh, layer 5. So let's undo that. So here's a great opportunity to, uh, to do some simple rendering. So uh, let me bump the, the tolerance down. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this on three different layers. So there's one, here's two, and here's three. And so from here I can do some other type of rendering. Um, I can click on lock transparency again, go to my airbrush, and then go to black, and it's only going to fill in that surface. So I'll go to this one, I might put in a little bit more, whoops, I need to lock the transparency, put in a little bit more, and I can render in that manner. But if I do hide the line work in this instance, if I hide my line work, then I've got wide edges. So that could be desirable, and it could also be uh, very much not desirable. So there's two ways. Um, for this circle, that might actually be a very good option. So let's pick that. Let's go to our fill bucket. Make sure it's on sample all layers. My tolerance seems fine. And then I'll drop in this blue color. And I'm going to lock the transparency there because I want to basically go through and um, render this ball. And so I'm going to start with a little bit of uh, black. And again, my suggestion is just use black and white. But you can always pick like a, a darker color. And then so here's my white, and there my ball is, is rendered. So let's go to the cylinder. Let's go back to this orange. And on this one, uh, I'm going to go back to to what is my preferred method, which is just to basically fill this whole thing in. And try and do quick gestures to where I've got a smooth elliptical shape up there, quick gestures for the side. 
This is also one reason why I like to sketch with a full opacity pencil is because it gives me a little bit of tolerance for error if I'm going to keep my line work. So there's my cylinder and rendering a cylinder. Uh, I'm again going to, I'm going to duplicate this to render that top surface. Uh, and I'll come back in and just erase the top. So go to white. There's my top. If you wanted to make this look a little bit glossier, Get a little bit smaller uh, with that airbrush. And now all I have to erase, and again I have to turn off lock transparency, all I have to erase is around this edge. And I'm going to try and erase all that because I haven't rendered the body of the cylinder yet, just this top face. So let's go back to the body. I'm going to lock transparency there. Airbrush black the fewer gestures the better it's just a little bit more controlled and even here I, I see that the top surface is a little bit brighter than what I'd like so I can just adjust the opacity to get it to where it feels um, a little bit better. And that's your simple uh, rendering applying color to basic shapes tutorial.